Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we are going to create a halation effect. I hope I'm saying that right. Nonetheless, it's a really cool effect. It works great on photos that have bright lights in them. So you get like this glow hazy look around the highlights of the image. Now, if you want to pick up a copy of On One Photo Raw and save a little bit of money, consider using my coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20. It'll save you some money when you go to checkout. I do make a small commission off of that, but that all goes right back into this channel. And I greatly appreciate everyone who uses that and supports me in that way. Also, if you want to learn how to use On One at your own pace with a one-on-one -on -one coaching call, consider the link in the description, sign up for a coaching call, and I'll create a workflow or help you create a workflow that would be very beneficial and helpful for you in using On One Photo Raw. So I'd love to be able to assist you in that way. Now, let's dive into the project. Here we are inside of On One Photo Raw, and here's what the uh, finished product looks like. And this is what we're starting with. So it's not like this over the top crazy effect. And this halation effect is really like simulating what happened with film uh, and very particular types of film. I don't know all of the film that would have had this impact uh, on the highlights, but I do know that this is an effect that some people like to add add to their looks, especially when they're trying to recreate a film look. So I'm just going to show you how to do that because it's actually really, really easy to do inside of On One. So again, this is what we're creating and this is what we have so far. And this is also a very strong, uh, I guess, rendition of it, but I'll show you how you can tame it. So with all that being said, let's jump over here to the original and the very first thing that you want to do is come over to effects hit add and then we're going to add a blur now remember the focus here is the highlights so what we want to do is right click on the mask for your blur and you want to click create luminosity mask and what that does is it puts it into like it creates a mask range based off of luminance. I'm not going to go into it. Just know that luminosity mask is what you want to use. If I hit the letter O, it looks like I turned the image black and white. But remember, we want to target the brighter areas. All right. Now, the brightest areas are actually what's popping up in right in in white. If I can speak today, I promise. All right. So what we're going to do is come over to masking and then down here where it says window, you can start to really hone in your mask. Now, remember, we want the brighter portions of the image. So I'm just going to bring this little uh, slider up and you can see that it's only starting to target the brightest areas of the image. Now, in my experimentation, the uh, more highlights that you include, the better the effect looks, but you can get this as fine tuned as you want using the window slider. If I pull this all the way up, I'm only selecting the brightest of the brights and that doesn't have as dramatic of an effect. And this is the reason why I was saying you could tame this effect if you really, really, really wanted to. But where I find that it works the best is a little over halfway. Uh, and you know, your image is going to require different, uh, needs. So just keep that in mind. And now what we'll do is we will come over to the blending options of that particular, uh, effect. And we're going to click on screen. We're going to change this to screen. Now it doesn't look like anything happened because I still have the mask on. So let me hit the letter O, get rid of that mask. And let me show you what really was happening there. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see it just starts to expand the areas around those bright highlight areas. Now you can use your, uh, your Gaussian blur here. You also want to make sure that this is on Gaussian blur. Forgot to mention that. Uh, but you can increase or decrease the value. What I, I think 30 is going to be good for this particular image. And I'll show you how you can really see that a little bit later. So the next step is coming over to local 
and I think local is the best place. I'm still experimenting with this, but this is how I found to make it work. So this is why I'm teaching you using a local adjustment. And what you want to do, just so that way we can see the effect, what we want to do is come up to blending once we have selected that local adjustment. And we want to change our blend mode from normal, not the layer, the blend mode. And we want to change it from normal to either overlay or soft light. I'm going to start with overlay because that seems to be the, or that's always the strongest contrast of what you want to add to an effect. And then I'm just going to double click exposure because I don't want to use that. Now what we're going to do is come all the way down here to the bottom and click paint with color. Now, on my version of on one, I get the color wheel as soon as I select paint with color, paint with color and click the color dialog box. And I'm going to make this red at first, just so that way it stands out. But I can change this color to whatever I want. And we'll go ahead and close this box down because we don't need it. So again, we're not seeing the effect. So what do we need to do? Well, we're going to come back over to effects. We're going to right click on our layer mask that we have for blur and we're going to copy the mask and then we'll come over to local. And when I paste this, you'll see what happens. We're just going to go ahead and paste that right onto the mask. And once it loads in, it's coming. Let's try that again. Maybe we didn't copy it. Copy mask. Paste mask. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll do it the manual way. Sometimes things just don't work the way we expect them to. So we're going to hover over mask after we selected the mask and we are going to click on the luminosity icon. This is going to put this all over and you can see that it's already adding the effect to the highlights or the brighter areas of the image. But we want to focus in on just the brightest areas. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this window down until we start to see it only impacting the highlights. Now, this is obviously not a very good look, but this would be like that classic halation effect. And the original image, it just had a lot of blue in it. So what I wanted to do is really accentuate the blue. So we'll click on the color here. And this is where being able to change the color comes into handy, comes into handy, comes in handy. So we're just going to go ahead and move this all all the way over here to a blue. And I think that this looks the best. But let's say I you know couldn't really eyeball it because I had a very particular color. I can use the eyedropper tool. So by clicking the eyedropper tool, I can then come in and I can select something that represents the blue that I want to actually uh, apply this effect to. And I can click that and you can see how it turns it into a little bit darker of a blue than what I want. So let's try that again. And maybe we'll come somewhere near these highlights, maybe this color blue. And that gets a little bit closer to what I think makes sense for this effect. Now, again, you can tailor this to your image. If I hit the letter O so I can take a look at how much of the highlights I'm actually impacting, I come back over to mask. I can just go ahead and pull this in. So now I'm only getting a very, very select bit of those highlights. And this, I think, is the subtle approach that really complements the film aspect well. So let's go ahead and turn this particular effect off and then turn it back on. And you could see how it's just ever so faintly there. Like, let's go ahead and zoom in on this area right here. And if I turn this off and turn it back on, you could see what's happening just right in this little area here. So that is one of the ways that you can add halation to your photos. Now, of course, 
I want to finish this off because I feel like you got to give it the full look. And that's where film grain comes in. And with this, I would probably go something. Uh, let's go. I want something pretty aggressive. So let's go 3200. Yeah. And then all I'm going to do is pull down on the amount. And you can see how that just adds in a little bit of texture and and grain to the overall image. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, it just adds a little bit of grit to the image and really helps with that overall look. So hopefully you found some value in this content. If you did, smash the like button. If you're new here, consider subscribing. If you want to see more content about On One Photo Raw editing, click the playlist that's on the screen now. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.